So, Kyle Wright, this is the part of the circuit, of course, where the Yamaha really gets into its stride. Can he find a way through on Glenn Irwin? He's shaping up something here. Is he going to have a look? Oh, we thought about one into Sterling, Sterling Benz. Yep. It's a weird, weird bendy Sterling, really distant in the inside, on the inside, but kind of flat camber going in and flat camber coming out, which you've got to try and manage. Around clearways we go once more then. We're about to start lap 13 of 20. Tommy Bridewell at the moment is the fastest rider on circuit in terms of his fastest lap. That means he will be pole later on. And at the moment, of course, he is your championship leader. As it stands, two and a half points would be his lead heading into this afternoon's race. Yeah, and, and that's not enough to, to be sitting behind your team. You know, he'd be wanting a little bit more. There you go, that's a 25.6 from Tommy Bridewell as they jump down the hill then towards Graham Hill Bend. Just to quickly mention Josh Brooks, 20, number 25, a uh, serial winner here at Brands Hatch, is in fourth and he's been lapping pretty well. This is as yeah. good as we've seen Josh so far this weekend. You forget just how good uh, Josh Brooks has been around here. Many of the time we've seen a championship decided and we're concentrating in two championship rivals and, and, and Josh has been 10 seconds oh, up the road. Tommy's oh, going for it through Hawthorne Bend. He's gone through on Tommy Bridewell. The car ride is biting back immediately though. He pulls up alongside the beer monster, the caddy man, and goes back through again. Front end bouncing around for Tommy. Yeah. Uh, and that's where the Yamaha's good. Uh, so, and, and I think that Kyle knows that he must bite back straight away because to try and pass one of these Ducatis at the end of a straight is uh, is a big ask. Yeah, this is the thing. I mean, a, a lot of the focus has been on Glenn Irwin and Tommy Bridewell, but Kyle wants to win this as much as anyone as well. 27 it, points behind it is possible if the other two trip themselves up. It's not as simple as Tommy go and buy him, and it's just, <laughs> I'll sit behind Glenn. This is so fascinating as we're about to start that 14 of 20. Tommy Bridewell then, he's shown his card, he wants to get through now, he's seen enough. He needs, he needs to get through, to give himself a chance of having to finish, or only having to yeah. finish behind his teammate in race three this afternoon, he needs to get past Kyle. There's not many room at the inn over at Druids, who's bringing home the bacon in race two here at Brands Hatch. Weirdly enough, Tommy will also know that if Kyle can get past and beat Glenn, well that's good enough for Tommy as well yeah. to, to finish behind Glenn in this third race. <laughs> it's fascinating. You need isn't a it? flipping degree mass for all this. This is how it would line up on the grid for race three later. Bridewell on pole from Vickers and O'Halloran with Ride, Iden and Irwin on row two. So Bridewell would be pole and Irwin would be sixth. But at the moment we'll just focus on what we're seeing here through Hawthorne. Irwin, Ride and Bridewell. At the moment it will just be these three. In with the chance of winning this afternoon. Look at that corner speed from the Yamaha. Just lovely. This is, uh, you know, going back even 40 years, Yamaha's have been really good at this kind of thing. Letting the brakes off, running it through, mid corner speed, rider friendly. Ooh. That, it's, it looks like there. that's the opportunity for Kyle Wright. Yeah, because he's so good leading up yeah. to that point that that just puts him in a position where he might just be able to nip through on the brakes into Sterling. Everywhere else on the circuit, Glenn Irwin has been squeaky clean. He's not that. He can pull out in just enough luck down the straight so that Kyle cannot do anything on the brakes. Tommy Bridewell here is pulling out of the slipstream. He's got the inside line. He's going for it now on Kyle Wright. Kyle will now have to try and go through on the comeback. That was neat and tidy from Bridewell. Oh, but up the it? inside, here comes Kyle Wright again. Uphill. Can he get through he's gonna have a look it's the block pass into druids oh tommy bridewell closes the door yeah that's a brave move because if anything would have happened it the both gone down tommy bridewell then is back into second place it's owen now from bridewell and kyle Wright. can kyle do anything about it it's difficult kyle is at his best and that bike is at his best against the decays when he's got clear air in front this is exactly where Tommy Bridewell now wants to be. Five and a half points would be his lead. And he can afford to sit in second, as we mentioned earlier. Two second place finishers behind Glenn today will be enough. It will, but then you're putting pressure. If you can get an extra place, then you can afford to relax even more on race three. He was going for a risky move there, old Tommy Bridewell. It's Glenn Irwin then from Tommy. Now, Glenn at the moment is not aware that it's Tommy behind him. He will be shortly. I imagine it'll be placed on his pit board pretty quickly. Yeah. Car ride now again trying to get through on Tommy, but can't. So out of Sterling Benz, 
under the bridge and into this magnificent amphitheatre at Brands Hatch. We're about to start lap 16 or 20. Yeah, great bit of track. You burst out of them trees. It's really dark. You're into the light with all the crowd there. It's just such a good feeling. Tommy's going to shape up something here. He's into the slipstream. He's not going to be quite close enough, is he, to have a look? But Kyle Ride is trying to find a way through, but just cannot get there. No, it's difficult for Tommy now to get anything on his teammate Glenn because he doesn't have the speed advantage down the straight to put himself in that position. Oh, a oh, oh, right. oh dear. It's Tommy Bridewell. Oh my goodness. And here comes Ryan Vickers as well. Ryan Vickers is like, don't worry, you've got a wingman. I'm coming to save the day. James, really? I think that happened. I think that happened where Tommy almost ran into the back of Glenn. He had to sit up a little bit Completely. and that pushed Kyle Wright. That's exactly what happened, Steve. Oh, so Kyle Wright has it have his chances disappeared now for the Lamy UMG Yamaha rider. It's the two PBM Ducatis and the two OMG Yamahas. You do wonder what team orders there are in the OMG Yamaha squad because Vickers cannot win this championship and hasn't been able to do for a couple of rounds. He's had a cracking second half of the season but struggled a bit at the beginning. Yeah, that's exactly what that was. Kyle looking to go up the inside and make a move on Tommy. Tommy had to run wide to avoid the back end of his teammate and that just shoved uh, Kyle out. Kyle's not finished here. No, he's not Remember, he's got clear air, so he should have a lot better chance at a good lap time here and catching him back up. Tommy's obviously keen now to get past uh, Irwin as well. We're about to start like 17 of 20. I caught up with Ryan Vickers earlier. I can answer your question. I said, are you going to help out Kyle if you need to? He said, to be fair, Kyle's been so fast, I don't think I will need to, but if I have to, I will. Yeah, I thought he would. Number two, Glenn Irwin leads. He's got to try and finish ahead of Tommy Bridewell, but Bridewell is now looking very speedy indeed up the hill to Druids Kyle Ride can he get himself close enough to have a nibble in the closing stages down through Graham Hill Bend these two have been the talk of the town pretty much all season, all season. yeah Tommy led at the beginning Glenn ground away and got that championship just about got the championship lead when you thought it was going to matter and then it all swapped around look at <laughs> these guys Speedway style around Clark Curve, fighting for grip, fighting for the championship, fighting for their dream. Glenn Irwin leads still on lap 17, number two ahead of Tommy Bridewell. <laughs> you can just see the tension in the PBM garage top left corner. Goodness me, these are nervous moments. And there'll just be a few laps to go when they cross the line next. At the moment, the two OMG Yamahas not able to reel in the Ducatis. So we exit Sterling, drop down the hill towards Clearways. Contrasting lines on the approach into the final corner and Tommy Bridewell here is shaping something up. He's now going to get on the power and they're both sliding it around. Clark Curve, Bridewell trying to get into the slipstream. Is he close enough to have a look? No, he's no. not Benham. That's what I'm saying, they're both identical speed. That's so difficult to get past there. Bridewell has had a lot of speed on the approach to Druids, but he's not close enough. Not close enough here. Kyle Ride and Ryan Vickers are there, third and fourth. Maybe a bit closer on that they're last lap. Yeah, yeah. They, they were a tenth quicker than the two Ducatis ahead of them last time around. But we've only got, of course, a couple of laps left. Down the Cooper straight, which isn't a straight at all. It's a kink left and then breaking hard into Surtees. Lots of pressure on Glenn Irwin now. He'll know his teammates I, there. I mean, you have to say, James, what, what, whatever's, whatever happens here, Glenn Irwin up to now has ridden an unbelievable race. Yeah. He's, been, he's had pressure coming from all and angles. Same from his teammate, Tommy, from yesterday. He, yeah. he just did everything right and, and caught with the pressure. Fascinating stuff. Five and a half points, the difference would be as it stands. And Kyle Ride would need to win the final race and hope something happened to Bridewell and Glenna as things stand. Can he get close enough, number 77, to get within striking distance? We're about to start the penultimate lap of the race. I think he's just about going to run out of time. He's your third place man, Kyle Ride. And then it's going to be so difficult to get past one of them. That, that's the thing, isn't it, James? Yeah. But he's definitely pulled another tenth or so in on them. Around clearways, and we now start the penultimate lap of the race here at Brands Hatch. Two to go in race two on the final day of the season. Five and a half points in it as it stands, and that last lap again, considerably quicker, was Carl Ride over Tommy Bridewell. Yeah, a bit wide there, though. His car is pushing on. He's with him, though. He's with he's him. Got, if he's going to have a go, he's going to be always oh, oh, wide deep. there. Yeah, I, you know, you can just tell they were pushing on. What he's hoping for, of course, is that these two engage out front. 
and we know that they have in the past. Yeah, good old Ryan Vickers doing his job for his teammate there, just uh, watched his teammate go wide and just sat behind him. Good lad. Yeah. Tommy lining something up. Out of certes, is he close enough to get in the slipstream? No, I identical so. machines. Identical machines. Yeah. And no mistake coming here so far from Glenn up towards Hawthorne now. This is Kyle Wright's last chance. From here onwards is where he's got the speed. He's Kyle Wright's he's territory, got, but he's, uh, got, he's, he's not close enough. No, he's not. He's got he's to try and find enough. himself a couple of tents here. And tip it right through Hawthorne Bend and then up towards Westfield. About to come around to Sheen Curve and then Sterling Bend. And then we're starting the final lap of the race. Tommy's looking at getting a run here. Cue the Jaws music, folks. The final lap of race two then of the weekend. The final day of action and Tommy Bridewell goes really hot into clearways, trying to shape something up. The ties are screaming for grip as we come over the start finish straight. Tommy Bridewell then, does he make his move here into clearways? Uh, sorry, it's Paddock Hill Bend. No, no he's not close enough. Yeah, problem was he got a little bit of a head shake, which meant he had to break a little bit earlier because that would have pushed the pads back a little bit. He's trying everything. He's not going to do it into Druids either. So that's another opportunity gone. Where does he make his move? He's early on the gas there. Downhill into Graham Hill, Ben. You wouldn't want to do it there. No, it's a difficult pass, is that? Unless you get so much uh, speed out of Druid, which they're both the same on the same bike. Yeah, and, and again through towards Surtees. They're not able to make any headway now. But here's another opportunity for Tommy Bridewell. If he can get on the power early enough. Too far back. He is too far back. Yeah. So he's running out of time here, Tommy Bridewell. Through Hawthorne Bend. And there's just half a dozen corners left here in race two. He's close now. He is close. But is, gonna, is this going to be a nip the inside of Sterling? He's going to get through That's Sheen's the only quick. chance he's got other than that is the final corner or a round and a drag to the line. He's looking at it. He's getting very he's close here. It's Tommy Bridewell, but not quite close enough to make the move into Sterling Bend. It's now going to be all the way down towards Clearways and then the run to the line. And I don't think at the moment he looks like he's close enough. I think the same. Here we go then, dropping down into the hill, around Clearway Corner. It's been a sublime ride from the PBM boys. And across the line we go, and Glenn Owen wrestles back a victory here. There'll be five and a half in it, going into the last race of the season, with Kyle Wright finishing in third. And there's tears already from Jordan. It's another one-two for the Beer Monster boys, and it's all on for the final race of the day, James. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you couldn't split the two, could you? Unbelievable scenes here at Brands Hatch. Of course, Tommy knows that if he does that again in race two, he's won the, he's championship. Won the championship, but it, it sounds so much easier Honestly, than it is. Still anything can go wrong here. Some Northern Irish flags flying high here at Brands Hatch in ferocious support of that man, number two, Glenn Irwin. Yeah. Glenn would have been just hoping that his mate there, Kyle, could have got in between somehow. And so often, as we've seen this year, James, both Glenn Irwin and Tommy Bridewell delivering and doing what they needed to do. Correct.